You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, Gene. Johnson. After Buzz TV. The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Silicon Valley After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Silicon Valley After Show. Hey everybody, it's AfterBuzz TV and we are the Silicon Valley After Show. We're going to be talking and recap and an after showing the premiere. I'm Jeffrey Masters, joining me is JB Zimmerman. Hello, hello. So tell me, what were your initial thoughts on the show? I liked it. I thought it was pretty funny. Um, I'm originally from the Bay Area, so it was kind of cool oh, to cool. see that. Um, uh, not quite Silicon Valley, so it was still a bit new, but it was still... A little nostalgia there, for sure. I don't know that it, was it shot there or not. Did you recognize anything? Um, I saw some of the the names were oh, okay. kept. Um, the hospital Atherton is definitely big. I'm not sure if they shot it there though. All right. Um, I mean, we gotta looked, look that up. <laughs> definitely, definitely. It looked like they used a lot of sets and stuff too. So I'm sure that they filmed it large part in LA, just like everything else. Totally, of course, a soundstage. I liked it, I thought it was good. I, um, I'm i excited to get past the like, juxtaposition Definitely. of the premiere. Definitely. I mean, you gotta have it, but like, and pilots are so tricky, but um, I thought they like tied it in nicely. But uh, I don't know, I'm always frustrated with like pilots because like not a lot plot wise happens. Right, right. There's a lot of setup. You got to meet all the characters. Yeah, you got to find out like what's going on. I was excited that they um, moved beyond the Pied Piper idea. Right. I think it's a cool, like fun thing. But to know that we're going to be talking about the algorithm that made it work and then expanding that into like right. more, more worldly things. Exactly. It was interesting how they take something that's obviously very complex and try to make it. Uh, more accessible to the mainstream and explain it yeah, sort totally. of while, you know, people like you and me, obviously we don't have that much tech experience, right. um, but can we, we can understand. I was able to follow it along yeah. pretty well. And I think it's good that they did expand it into like other things because if we're staying on like the music thing, I thought it could have right. possibly gotten a little bit old. Definitely, definitely. I mean, I think that they did it in a very interesting way where his idea wasn't the initial thing that he wanted to create. It was yeah. just a piece of what made that work that was that really caught on yeah and i mean i'm excited for the so they had like the big decision was like the climax of this right. they chose to have it like developed what was it it was like 10 million dollars versus 200,000 and right in 5% it was kind yeah. of like a short tank <laughs> yeah type thing um and i didn't think until now but i guess that allows like the show to be exciting right to have him working on it definitely yeah so i obviously think that that's the way he's going to go um he pretty much confirmed at the yeah. end of the episode that he was going to take the two hundred thousand instead. But yeah. um, there's that massive like rallying cry for like nerds. Everywhere. Yeah, exactly. Just like, <laughs> oh no. Yeah, I liked all like the name throwouts too about like the Steve Definitely. Jobs and a the lot Elon of, Musk. A lot of and... name drops for sure. That was cool. Yeah, I um, uh, honestly though, I kind of. Uh, so they're spoofing this. Right. It's like they've right. made that clear. I kind of worry that it was a little too like esoteric. That it's kind mm -hmm. of they were so worried about. I felt they were so worried about um, making sure like the Silicon Valley community actually liked it, right? And thought it was funny that maybe they were worrying too much about that small audience versus everybody else. Definitely, definitely. I felt like there's a lot of things that maybe I just didn't even get because yeah. I'm not plugged in as much to that world. Um, there's. I try to see all the references, but it's a pretty deep satire, so I think there's a lot of things that we missed. Yeah, and I, I liked it. I thought it was funny, but I was just like, some like punchlines hit, and I could right. tell they were the punchlines, and I was like, oh, I wish I understood why this is, <laughs> yeah, exactly. should be funny. <laughs> <laughs> it was kind of like the Big Bang Theory, but set in a frat house. Right, exactly, exactly. A little more beer, a little more marijuana, a little more of the uh, guidance of uh, T.J. Exactly, Miller. Exactly, exactly. <laughs> Um, similar to Office Space, I mean, I love that movie. I yeah. think it's hilarious, also by Mike Judge. Um, but I definitely felt like if we were in that industry, we would definitely like yeah. it a lot more. I mean, I loved the show. I thought it was hilarious. But Totally. I think that uh, T.J. Miller is going to be like a breakout star. Oh, definitely, definitely. He absolutely nailed the role, which I'm happy about. I, he's 
been kind of in a few things. He's obviously done some supporting cast He's done roles. So and much stuff. stuff. But yeah. it's good to see him and sort of take control of something. He's totally, totally stole the show. So yeah, just like such a fascinating character of um. I know, I like that he was, like, giving out advice, and he's like, no, I'm really excited for you. And it wasn't, like, this stereotypical, like, Hollywood moment of, like, holding their hand and being like, listen, I'm so happy for you. I'm right. shedding a tear because this is my Oscar. But um, <laughs> I liked him a lot. Yeah, he's cool. And I think that's such a cool idea that they're living in, that they call the incubator. Right, right. And that he helps them develop the ideas, charges them smaller rents, and then gets a percentage. That's, like, a brilliant idea definitely i want to hear more about what his company did and sort of that oh, story yeah. about um how he obviously took took the money and sold um so i want to hear you know how much he made yeah and sort of if that decision was tough for him and i think we'll well i think we'll find out that hopefully in more episodes and definitely. also i'm excited to meet more of like the cast more in depth right right you know they just set up the premise they had to spend so much time on uh richard Exactly. And they, since there are so many characters we had to meet, obviously we couldn't spend that much time on each character. Of course. Um, the assistant, there weren't that many girls on the show. I know. Um, that was interesting. Definitely. So, the, I mean, obviously the gender equality is very skewed. But I think that's something they wanted to say more about the that industry. I mean, it's oh. so um, heavily male skewed anyway. I mean, obviously they could have had more characters and the assistant i think is probably going to have a more uh, larger role oh in, do you? In, um i don't know maybe there could be a romantic relationship involved um with her and the main character oh wait wait, wait. the assist which assistant of rich uh, the of, like, the buyer of peter gregory's assistant Oh, the female. Oh, I right. thought you meant uh, Glenn. What was the other guy's name? His assistant. Oh, I got um, you. I was Gavin. Like, uh, Gavin. Yeah. I was like, why would Gavin's assistant? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> no. Oh, yes. The f yes, the female. The one female on the show. Yeah, she pretty much is the only female in the entire show I, that we saw. I was not keeping track, but I think she might have been the only like woman with a speaking part. Right, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I, I mean, yeah. I guess that is how Silicon Valley is. Like we said, I don't have that much experience, but I can't, I mean, not that we ever hear in the press. Right. About, oh my God, I hope this doesn't sound like crazy sexist. Yeah. But you know, you never hear about like a woman like developing like this crazy idea from her garage. Exactly, exactly. It's always like the socially awkward computer nerds. Definitely. And that was kind of the fun of the show is that satire on that whole geek culture and how yeah. when they become kind of the controlling arm, obviously the... They're billionaires now, so it's sort of funny that they were poking fun at, you know, what a billionaire would look like. Um, I think uh, they yeah. had Gavin Belson wearing those skeleton I shoes. I know, I hate those <laughs> shoes. <laughs> that was fun, though, seeing all, like, the new technology. Those right. shoes, like, this tiny car. Oh, yeah. The, <laughs> have you the ever seen something like car. that before? Uh, I've seen a lot of smart cars. Definitely in San Francisco, they have uh, a lot of Oh, really? Like one-seaters, though? Right, right. Oh, I've never seen that. Never before. something that skinny. That okay. was... <laughs> That was a bit extreme, for sure. Yeah, I could. I'm envious of that in LA. <laughs> yeah. yeah, they could definitely get through traffic a lot easier. I think. Yeah, totally. It could be worth it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I um, yeah, the cast. I thought I, it was interesting that obviously they were talking about no females, but like there was the token like Indian programmer, right. and they kind of like made that clear. It was funny that they even referenced that, how each group sort of finds yeah, like one. Overweight man um, with a beard. Yeah, exactly. The tall, skinny, white guy, the yeah. um, Indian guy, the totally. small Asian guy, <laughs> to make, complete each little gang, gang yeah. click. I wonder how they're going to differentiate themselves from Big Bang Theory. Because there's a lot of those style of jokes, right. you know? I could feel like it was, like, the same, like, writers, even though it wasn't. Like, Mike Judge didn't do that. But um, I just wonder, um, I don't know, you, you, you need to, like, be different than other shows, especially when that crazy successful still today. Absolutely. I just want to, I hope it, maybe they, I hope they, what am I trying to say? I hope they focus on their differences, which is that these are perhaps, like, a little more socially adept people mm -hmm. and, like, go for that like get him a girlfriend have him like drinking and blacking out like something that those characters on the big bang theory never do definitely definitely it'll be interesting to see obviously the season arc i imagine is just kind of him developing this product but what else they throw into it i mean obviously there's only so much you can watch of yeah. people typing on a computer totally you know what types of things will they get into 
um, the parties. I've, I've heard, definitely heard some things because these people have so much money and they always like to throw huge parties. Um, and I guess that was a big thing in the exactly. opening scene. Yeah, and that like nobody's like <laughs> Kid Rock. Yeah, nobody's like cheering on. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Um, I was reading one thing about uh, Elon Musk's um, review, sort of a, after he screened it, and he said that was the one thing that uh, was different than the actual reality because he thought that in real life the, they party a lot. The Burning Man. Yeah, Wait, exactly. let's read that quote. I got it. <laughs> and it's Elon Musk. Please don't do that. Oh. Elliot, just kidding. Um, he says, it's so weird. Uh, such a weird quote. We got to read it. Most startups are a soap opera, but not that kind of soap opera. I really feel like Mike Judge has never been to Burning Man, which is what Silicon Valley is. If you haven't been, you just don't get it. You could take the craziest LA party, multiply it by a thousand, and it doesn't even get effing close to what Silicon Valley is. That's so weird. Like Burning Man? Burning Man. I've never been, uh, so uh, I can't say. <laughs> I haven't either, but I just, I wonder, is he making, like, a comparison saying that, like, the crazy, like, druggy, like, crowded nature? Or is he actually saying, of Burning Man? Or, like, is he actually saying that they, like, party that hard and like that? I think he's saying that. I think really? He, um, because they work so hard, I imagine, when they do... Um, want to have a good time and let loose, they really go full-blown. Well, then Elon is right, because I, you never would have guessed that. Definitely. Well, I mean, the party that they were um, at in the opening scene definitely seemed like it um, was definitely not the funniest. I mean, Kid Rock was obviously not, not amused by the lack of crowd. Yeah. Oh, and I guess, like we said, there I, didn't, I don't remember seeing any females there at that party. Definitely. Again, they did a, sort of a wide shot pan, and there was a few models that they referenced, but yeah. no one ever like, talked to any of them. It was like all them. like graphic tees and like blazers. <laughs> right, exactly. <laughs> I guess that's what their dress code is. So, well, yeah, I, I mean, all of the Silicon Valley people are known for obviously dressing down. Yeah. Um, Mark Zuckerberg definitely wears his hoodie every day. Of course. Uh, which I think he has a, like, there's a Facebook brand hoodie. A I, hoodie? I, I'm not sure if you can buy it, but he oh, that's smart. Um, has it for everybody that works for him oh that's cool like facebook only exactly. worker employees yeah it's, maybe hooli the gang jacket we'll start. No. <laughs> it's, was that is it hooli uh, i think it's hooli yes okay that i like that nobody's like ever working in right. there yeah i i really hope that they um do a lot more of the satire of sort of obviously google type culture yeah is pretty unique they had the meeting bike uh, which is a oh, circular yeah, yeah. bike that everybody faces each other and pedals at the same time. But I wonder, will he be able to stay working at Hooli if he goes with the um, the other offer? Right, right. I imagine that he might drop out. Yeah, and I guess all the guys too. That was nice that he's bringing his friends along. Right, exactly. A little companionship. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, his one friend just, who is we exactly? But, oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, those house guys have got to have bigger roles. Expanding. Definitely, definitely. I, I feel like it's like the opening scene of, like, The Bachelor, where you, like, have, like, three women, and you, like, meet the other ones eventually. Exactly. It's the sort three of favorites. tough to feel out who's who. But uh, Yeah. I have to say, I really, I've never seen Thomas uh, middle ditch in anything before. Right. And I thought he was, like, his character's amazing. Definitely, definitely. He is a surprisingly good actor. I completely bought everything he was trying to do as that sort of, yeah. awkward, um, silent, shy type. Yeah, he's done a lot of comedy and a lot in L.A., and um, he is a little bit of that, but I thought it was not, like, overdone at all and is like, super believable. Definitely. I was. Um, I liked how they used sort of a fresh face for the starring role. Obviously, T.J. Miller we've seen in a bunch of other things. O honestly, only T.J. Miller is the only person I've seen in anything. Right. There's a few other characters that I've seen in a few other shows, but uh, obviously always supporting yeah. and um, never anything huge. Yeah, I mean, this is for uh, Middle of Ditches is huge, Thomas. Absolutely. If this is a hit show, I'm HBO, so smart, they place it right after Game of Thrones, oh, right before Veep. I know. It's just perfectly sandwiched to build a great audience. And did you see that Game of Thrones shut down HBO Go tonight? Oh, yeah. I was trying to, to oh, were log you? on, and it... Did not work out. God, well. yeah, they're giving this like the full court press. Absolutely, billboards are everywhere. Very excited, definitely. I know. I hope it. I think it will do well. It's got to hit its. Yeah, I, I, I don't want to sound overly critical, but it. I feel like it's got every like breadcrumb laid down to like hit its oh, stride. Oh right. It, in terms of a launching point for show, it's it's absolutely. Shall we jump into some predictions? Dare we say? Absolutely. 
And now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. Hmm. I know there's a lot of like open ended options, but do you have any predictions at all? I definitely think he's going to um, take the 200,000. Okay. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right, that was clear. obvious <laughs> prediction right there. Um, I think that. I think that he and um, Peter Gregory's assistant might, maybe they won't actually link up, but I think he will start to develop a relationship with her, or okay. at least want that to happen. I think somebody's got to. For sure. I mean, her, her being the only female in the show, <laughs> sort of, that's <laughs> the know. only place it can go. I mean, isn't that sad, though, Like that you're watching a TV show being like, somebody has to like, right, at yeah. least get kissed. <laughs> the one girl. Someone's it's got... the HBO show. We got to see some boobs somewhere. True, true. That is their style. Yeah, not just the nipple tracker app they're developing. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the nipple alert. Exactly. Yeah. I'm excited to see. Ah, tell me one more time. What's the guy's name who he's going with? The, the developer. Um, Peter Gregory. Peter I Gregory. Forget. I'll never forget. I'm excited to see what their relationship becomes and like that mentoring. And I think that's such a cool, interesting role that um, hasn't been explored on TV or film that I've seen at all. Like the um, successful Silicon Valley person who's now mentoring somebody and like developing a brand new idea. Definitely, definitely. I'm interested to see how involved he really gets. Maybe they won't see eye to eye on some things. Obviously, yeah, he totally. only has the... 5%, I believe, uh, yeah. stake in the company, but because he's such an established person to begin with, I wonder if he tries to strong arm um, the main character a little Maybe, bit. Maybe, but he also has, like, his mind has like, is on the bigger ideas. Like, he knows what's gonna right. work, what's not, like, what it could do. Something that's exciting. Absolutely. Oh my God. Short and Crazy. sweet, just like this episode. Exactly. I'm excited for next week. <laughs> me too. Until next week, though, where can we find you on social media? Uh, you can follow me at JB underscore Zimmerman. On Twitter? On Twitter, yes. Perfect. And you can follow me at JeffMasters1. We will see you next week. Nice. Buzz you. Producers Maria Menunos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff. We would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other after shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principals. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here. And be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later. <laughs>